If you're wondering how you can create a bullet logo in Illustrator, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years, and in this Embattled Plus tutorial, I'll put my experience to use, as I show you step by step how you can create this bullet logo from scratch, and then how you can easily turn it into a 3D logo. Create a new document. Select pixels from the drop-down menu. Set the width to 850 and the height to 600 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to only 72 pixels per inch. Then you can create your new document. Now go to window in the menu bar and first of all make sure that the control panel is active. And then open all the panels that have this check mark. Once you're done, go to view and show grid to enable the grid. Go again to view, but this time select snap to grid, which will enable the snap to grid feature. For this tutorial, you'll need a grid line every five pixels. So let's go to edit, preferences, guides and grid. Just enter five in this grid line every box. Click OK to apply the changes. You can press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on the artboard. And let's start by selecting the ellipse tool from the toolbar. Actually, let's press Ctrl and plus one more time to zoom in a bit more. Then simply click on your artboard to create a 95 by 20 pixels shape. Pressing Shift and X will quickly swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the stroke and remove the color. Use the selection tool to move this shape to the bottom side of your artboard. Hold down the Alt key and drag a copy of this shape 10 pixels up. Keep in mind that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 10 pixels. Then continue with the rectangle tool. Use it to create a 95 by 10 pixels shape. Let's move it on top of these ellipses like this. Then select all of your shapes and merge them using the Unite button from the Pathfinder panel. Continue with the rectangle tool and this time use it to create an 85 by 20 pixels shape. Let's make it blue. Move it in this exact position. Keep it selected and go to Effect, Warp and Arc Lower. Check this horizontal box and set the bend to only 15%. Click OK to apply this effect and then expand it by going to Object and Expand Appearance. Reselect the ellipse tool. Let's create a 95 by 30 pixels ellipse. Make it green. Place it on top of this blue shape like this. Make sure to check out Envato Elements, where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more. That's millions of creative assets, all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now using the link in the description. Continue with the rectangle tool and use it to create a 95 by 155 pixels shape. Move it on top of this green ellipse in this exact position. Now hold down the shift key to add to your selection this green ellipse. Merge these two shapes again using the Unite button from the Pathfinder panel. Using the Direct Selection tool, let's select just these two points and move to the Control panel where you can set the corners radius to 10 pixels. Continue with the Ellipse tool. Let's create an 85 by 160 pixels shape. Make it yellow. Move it on top of this green shape. And this position. Continue with the rectangle tool and add a rectangle on top of the bottom half of your ellipse like this. Now select both of these shapes and merge them. Reselect the rectangle tool and let's add a rectangle in this exact location. You can make it black. Select it along with your yellow shape and this time click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. You can press shift Control and G, which will ungroup this group. Select just this bottom yellow shape and delete it. Using the direct selection tool, let's select just these two anchor points. This time you need to set the corners radius to only 5 pixels. 
Continue with the rectangle tool and let's add an 85 by 10 pixels rectangle. Keep it selected. Switch to the direct selection tool so that you can set the corners radius again to 5 pixels. And now let's duplicate this layer. Simply drag it on top of this button. Turn off the visibility of your original layer as we'll need all the ships from this layer when we create the 3D logo. Keep this copy of the layer selected and let's continue with the rest of our logo. First of all, make this rounded rectangle black. Grab again the ellipse tool and this time use it to create a 30 by 110 pixels shape. Make it white. Move it on top of your yellow shape in this exact position. Then select your yellow shape and go to Object, Path and Offset Path. Set the offset to minus 10 pixels and click OK to create this new shape. Hold down the Shift key to add to your selection this white ellipse. Click the Intersect button from the Pathfinder panel. Using again the Direct Selection tool, select just these two points. Keep in mind that you need to hold down the Shift key to add to your selection this second point. You need to set the corners radius to 3 pixels. Continue with the Rectangle tool. Add a 30 by 10 pixels shape. Keep it wide and move it in this position. Switch to the Direct Selection tool so that you can set the corners radius to 3 pixels. Reselect the Rectangle tool. This time you need to create a 30 by 180 pixels rectangle. Let's move it on top of this green shape in this position. Now select your green shape and go to Object, Path and Offset Path. Keep the offset set to minus 10 pixels and click OK to create the new shape. Again hold down the Shift key to select your white shape along with this new shape. Click again the Intersect button from the Pathfinder panel. Switch to the Direct Selection tool and set the corners radius to 3 pixels. Continue with the Rectangle tool. This time you'll need a 30 by 35 pixels shape. Let's move it in this exact position on top of your blue shape. Select this blue shape and press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F which will add a copy in front. Hold down the Shift key and add to your selection this white shape. Click this intersect button, then select your green shape and this time press Ctrl C to copy it and then Ctrl Shift and V which will add a copy in the same place but on top of the rest of your design. Select this new green shape along with this white shape and click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Reselect the rectangle tool one more time. You need a 30 pixel square. Move it on top of this black shape. Select the black shape and add a copy in front. So press Ctrl C and Ctrl F. Now hold down the Shift key to select this copy along with your white square. And click the Intersect button from the Pathfinder panel. Switch to the Ellipse tool and let's add a new ellipse on top of this shape like this. Select it along with this other white shape and click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Then select both of these shapes and let's not forget to set the corners radius to 3 pixels. Continue with the selection tool. Select these colored shapes along with your two black shapes and unite them using this same unite button from the Pathfinder panel. Then select your black shape along with all your white shapes and this time click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Let's zoom in on this area for a few moments. Select the shape builder tool, hold down the alt key and click and drag across this slim area to remove it. Now you can press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire design. Select your logo, rotate it 90 degrees to the right, and then you can use the Reflect tool to easily flip your logo like this. Move to the Control panel, make sure that the alignment is set to artboard, and simply click these two buttons to easily move your logo to the center of the artboard. Let's add a simple background, so select the Rectangle tool. Use it to create a shape which will cover your entire artboard. 
Click again these two buttons to move your selected shape to the center of the artboard. Let's move it behind the logo. Keep it selected and replace the color with 255, 222 and 23. You can also replace your logo color with 6, 10 and 43. And now let's select the type tool to add some text. First of all, focus on the control panel to set the settings for the text which we are about to add. We'll use the road store font, which you can get from Envato Elements. Increase the size to 72. Also open the character flyout panel and set the tracking to 100. Now you can click on your artboard and type in bullet. Press the escape key when you're done. Using the eyedropper tool, you can easily add the font color to your text. So just click your logo. Now move your text roughly in this position. Reselect the type tool and get back to the control panel. For the second piece of text, you'll need the foregone font, which again you can find at Envato Elements. Remember to lower the size to 28 and increase the tracking to about 720. Now you can click again on your artboard and type in industries. Press the escape key when you're done and move this text below the bullet one. Use again the eyedropper tool to change the color of this text from black to the color of your logo. Then you can select your text along with the logo and press Ctrl G which will group your selection. And click again these two buttons to easily move your entire logo to the center of the artboard. This will be your flat bullet logo. Now that we are done with this first design, let's make it invisible. Turn back on the visibility of this first layer and select just the blue shape. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on it. Using the anchor point tool, let's click these two points to turn them into sharp points. Then use the direct selection tool to select these other two points and set the corners radius to 8 pixels. Press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire artboard. Actually, let's press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on these shapes. Continue with the line segment tool. Remember to hold down the shift key as you click and drag to easily create a vertical path. Switch to the selection tool. Again, hold down the shift key and add to your selection this green shape. Click it again to make it the reference shape and then click this button which will perfectly align your vertical line with the green shape. Now you need to select your vertical line along with the rest of the shapes. Continue with the Shape Builder tool. Hold down the Alt key and click and drag across the left half of your shapes to simply remove them. Don't miss this line and also this one. You need to have a look inside the Layers panel, select the remaining path and also delete it. Now you need to adjust the colors for these remaining shapes. Start with the green one and change it to 211, 170 and 80. Continue with these two and replace the colors with 129, 79 and 70. And finally for these two you need to replace the existing colors with 219. 170 and 77. Now you can select all of these shapes and press Ctrl G which will group them. And having this group selected, let's go to Effect, 3D and Materials and we'll use Revolve. Keep these settings as they come. Just select this front preset. Make sure that the perspective is set to 0 degrees and then you can switch to the Materials tab. We'll keep this default material, increase the roughness to 0.5 and the metallic to 1. Continue with the lighting tab. First of all, make sure that the color is set to white. Increase the intensity to 150%. Keep the rotation set to 145 degrees. Increase the height to 50 degrees. Keep the softness at 40% and double the intensity. 
And finally, don't forget to enable the ray tracing. You can now close this panel and let's also apply a shadow. So let's go to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. Change the blending mode to Normal. Lower the opacity to 30%. Set both of these offset values to 15 pixels. Increase the blur to 25 pixels. Make sure that the color is set to black. And then you can click OK to apply this effect. Next, you need to go to Object and Expand Appearance, which will allow you to rotate this bullet. You can select just the bullet from this group and flip it again using the Reflect tool. And then you can add your text just as you did with the flat bullet logo. With these final touches, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it lets me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.